Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'll be overviewing a custom flipper by Marfion, son to the founder of Microtech and the fully custom side of the brand. This is the protocol, the latest flipper design offered by the company. I'll start with the model specs. Sporting a two and three quarter inch drop point blade comprised of CTS 204P steel, the blade is 13 hundredths of an inch thick, followed by a hand ground hollow grind. The finish is Marfion's two-tone apocalyptic style, which is bead blasted and stone washed on the bevel of the grind and swedge areas, while the flats are a hand rub satin. Due to the steep belly ending in a long flat edge, the cutting edge comes in at two and eight hundred and seventy-five thousandths of an inch. The blade also sports a thumb hole along with a flipper tab for dual means of deployment. The handle comes in at four and hundred and twenty-five thousandths of an inch in length and a half an inch in thickness. The bolsters are comprised from titanium, then 3D sculpted and milled, and the apocalyptic finish was also applied, as with the frame, lock bar, and pocket clip. The green micarta inlays have a depth to them with their tiger striped appearance. The overall length of the flipper is 7 inches, with a weight of 3.9 ounces. There is jimping on the spine side of the bolsters, which continues in perfect unison onto the steel, stopping at the swedge. And again, there is jimping at the rear of the knife, milled into the back spacer that reaches out into the frame and also into the inlays. The pocket clip is also milled and sculpted from a chunk of titanium and contains a ceramic insert to slide in and out of the pocket with ease. And here is where Sean decided to place his billboarding with a beautifully anodized logo and name, which leaves the blade completely sterile, a highly attractive look. The clip is blind screw mounted or tapped in via the show side screw. Either way, the clip appears to be seamless. The titanium backspacer has been anodized to a golden color and 3D milled for a lanyard slot. Another classy touch by Marfion is the serial number or the number this unit was in the batch, along with its birth month and year, which is tucked away, milled into the spacer. All the body screws, lock bar insert screws, stop pin pair, and inlay screws have been anodized to this color, as well as the pivot collar that has also received the apocalyptic finish. The oversized pivot has what I believe to be a bead blast finish. All hardware on the Marfion is proprietary, and I believe its name is the tri-ring screw, but it can't be turned without Marfion's proprietary tool, which can be purchased from Microtech. The fit and finish is superb, with the transition between build materials being unapparent by touch. Every part of the build fits very snug and solid with its counterparts. The flipper tab has jimping that matches the bolsters and spacer and is the only jimping that isn't on the top side of the knife when in the open position. The tab being the primary means of deployment, the action is like a little firecracker. The detent is pretty strong, with a tightly tuned lock bar that I believe plays a major part in the awesome deployment. The drop point flies in a lockup with a loud snap, and with lockup happening at about 50%, which is super solid. The frame lock has a steel insert that doubles as an over travel stop due to its extended lip that fits into a milled pocket and hinders the lock from overextending in a downwards or outwards direction. And I could definitely be wrong, but from what I can see within these super tight and dense tolerances is the blade running on nylon washers. If you know differently, please comment below. After doing much research, I couldn't find a definite answer. I know Marfion has patent bearing bearing systems, no pun intended which could have nylon cages, as in other cases I'm aware of. But I can't make out any ceramic or steel bearings, although they could very well be hidden in their race. The protocol has a very nice landing zone that has two mill sections that are quite smooth. The tab has a hooked appearance, but is very comfortable to fidget and flip without fatigue setting in. Now I'm going to speak on the second means of deployment, which I have yet to see being used or even mentioned. The thumb hole is actually divided into two sections due to the troil on the handle. The larger area close to the pivot cannot be used to pull off a middle finger flick. Not enough leverage and the detent is just too strong. This area is what I use to pinch my thumb and index together, gaining leverage from the troil area and breaking the detent and I can proceed with a slow roll, basically a pinch pull only area. Being an adamant fidgeter concerning flippers, I'm most fond of flippers with numerous means of deployment and not just one. So for the sales rep to tell me the hole wasn't flickable the second he saw my finger approaching that area, considering the $1,150 price tag, was a bit disheartening. Me being a flickaholic, I just refuse to believe that. So it's definitely flickable with the middle finger and both ways, meaning you can manipulate the placement of the fingers and direction of the flick. 
Shown here, one can either line the hand up straight across the balls of the palm, place the tip of the fingers in the second section, and flick outwards away from the handle. Or you can cant the handle's angle where the handle lies across the lines of the palm at about a 45 degree angle from the fingers. This pushes along the hole in an upwards motion, but works just as effectively, unlike some other builds where only one angle can be used. The retraction is super smooth and assisted by the steep ramp, which I have actually shook the blade closed from being open and prior to overcoming the ramp. Where most flippers have that hump you must pass before even trying to drop or shake the blade shut, the protocol can overcome this and still slide around the entire travel and back to the detent falling in the hole. To me, that's quite a feat to pull off being a shorter blade. A thumb flick can also be pulled off, but because of the lock bar and my finger placement, plus hand size, it becomes pretty sketchy, leaving my pinky and ring finger as the only contact points holding the frame. The one complaint I have is the size. Although when gripping with just my fingertips, or the first section of my fingers, I can get all four on there no problem, it's the fact when I go to bare grip or place it deep in my palm, where my fingers get larger, I can only fit three, with the pinky left in an awkward position. Other than this issue, which is for my hand size, I love this design, and much more than I initially expected to. Once you get past the functionality of a piece, you can start to appreciate build quality and materials used, which still don't dictate the price, but rather where it's made, in this case the US being much higher in labor cost, how it's made, in this case all by hand from hardware anodizing, pocket clip finish, blade grinds, etc. And finally, how long it takes, which could be anywhere from 50 to 60 hours per knife, depending on finishes and anal jobs. And this is all to address those who say, why does it cost $1,145? In my opinion, it's justified. And if you are already familiar with this piece by Marfion, you know the question doesn't even need to be inquired. And I would like to thank the Blade Bar for providing this unit for review. So give them a visit at the shop or shop online for this and many other great knives at thebladebar.com. And with that, please comment down below, rate, share, and subscribe to the channel. Signing off from the Fuller Fanatic.